home technology, here to provide our customers with the best shopping experience, tech updates, news, and much more. So I hope you guys are doing great today. It's January 31st, around 8 a.m. New tech news, guys. Lots of good news to go over today. All right. Big, big news is that Xiaomi... All right, if you guys don't know the phone Xiaomi, it has wireless charging now on phones, has finally started picking up pace in recent years, but all solutions are still tethered in some way or another, aiming to address that. Xiaomi has unveiled the new MI Air Charge technology that can remotely charge your devices without cables or pads. So that's pretty crazy, guys. So, you know, Xiaomi, new Xiaomi wireless charging tech charges phones from the other side of the room. So imagine just being, you know, in the living room or the kitchen and your phone's charging in the, um, in the living room or even upstairs, right? Or even on the other side of the room. Like, that's crazy, right? So let's see, let's see more information about this because this is something that... Um, is very interesting and I think it's going to pick up a lot. So you see Xiaomi's new remote charging technology uses two core ways to be able to charge your phone from anywhere in the same room as its charging base. Space positioning and energy transmission, the in-house developed charging tech has five phase inter interference antennas built in to accurately detect and latch onto the smartphone. Then 144 antennas transmit concentrated uh, military waves directly to the phone to charge the device. Wow. So while Xiaomi has officially unveiled the MI Air Charge, there's currently no details on when it will be available or what devices will be compatible with the tech. It's likely you'll need to have a specific smartphone to work with this technology when it is on sale. Right, so that's very interesting to know, guys. Right, and as you can see here, here's kind of just like a little uh, GIF of how it would look like. Very clean. You can see the charging device here, and literally, you know, the person's holding the phone mid-air while the phone is still charging. That is, you know, no phone in the market is like that, is doing that. Xiaomi would probably be one of the first companies to roll out this feature. It's very, very sleek. The phone will have to be fitted with similar but uh, miniaturized systems consisting of a beacon antenna to broadcast positioning information with low power consumption and receiving array of 14 antennas. Then will that will then convert the MM wave signal emitted by the charger into electrical energy through a technology called re, uh, rectifier circuit. In its current form, the, I, the MI Air Charge uh, technology is capable of 5W remote charging over a distance of what Xiaomi says is several meters. Interestingly, the company claims that charging speed will not be affected by physical obstacles in the line of sight or number of devices being charged simultaneously. In practice, this means that you'll be able to change your devices, phones, speakers, wearables, and other smartphone devices or smart home devices, right? Without having to do anything except be in the room. So it's not like you have to go over there or go upstairs to get the charger, then come back downstairs, plug it in. This is going to be wireless wireless free hands charging which is you know definitely making me want to uh try xiaomi's products out and even you know try this feature you know on their new phone so that's that's awesome right so moreover soon after the technology was unveiled motorola showed off a similar functionality with its own technology Right in the video below, you can see two modified Motorola Edge phones placed away from the charger, 80 centimeters and 100 centimeters each, and each are being uh, wirelessly charged. Right. So let's check out this video. Let's see how um, this would actually work, you know, in physical real time. So let's see. Motorola's charging station. Let me show you the 
现在你可以看到两个手机都没有在充电。我把第一部手机放在一米的位置，你可以看到这个手机开始充电了。我把第二台手机放在八十厘米的地方。这个手机也开始充电了。现在我用手挡住充电发射器，你可以看到两部手机都停止充电了。OK, it looks like this is what's actually charging it too. This is. 开始充电了，是不是很厉害呢 ？Interesting. Interesting. So、um, that was just a little bit of a video concept of how it would actually look like.、Um, obviously. Uh, you know, once they actually roll out this feature,、um, you know, <clears throat> officially it's going to be looking a lot cleaner,、um, and we'll be able to understand. Hopefully, they can come out with the video in English. But that is just kind of、uh, the the overall concept of how it would look like, right? So little is known about this how this technology works. But Motorola says when this technology is a reality, it will be able to charge up to seven phones at one time. It seems that this technology is further from release from the Mi Air Charge、uh, from Xiaomi, but there's little detail about whether about either、uh, will it be released to the public, right? So some recent phones now support wireless charging that is almost as fast as wired charging, right? So for instance, the Xiaomi、uh, Mi 11 supports 50 watt wireless charging,、uh, which is faster than most of the competition. However, wireless charging is almost never as elegant as wired counterparts. There are byproducts such as heat, energy loss, and limited functionality. Worst of all, they need to be placed very precisely in a charging pad, making it even more difficult to use while charging than a regular cable approach. Right. So, what comes next? Right. So, apart from the obvious questions around price and availability of these upcoming technologies, both raise a few questions too. With the wireless charging supply,、uh, components take up a lot of space within products. Right. So, what will be the long-term repercussions of the battery health? Will it ever reach a speed to match wired solutions? Are there any health hazards to having concentrated energy waves going around all of us? Will it be、um, interoperable with devices from other manufacturers? Only time will tell how user friendly this entire approach is. Perhaps we will learn more about the Xiaomi Mi's Air Charge at upcoming global launch of the Xiaomi Mi series. All right. So、um, hopefully the the global launch will be soon. Um, looks like they're they're testing、uh, these you know these concepts, and this it'll be very interesting to see、um, just to see how this would work in full time in actual、uh, living room area or a living space or even in a business office or anywhere. So、um, I would say keep tabs on that, you Xiaomi fans. Definitely keep tabs on that for sure. Okay. Secondly, guys, um, uh, moreover on health issues. So experts have been looking forward to seeing results from Johnson and Johnson's COVID nineteen vaccine trials for months. The vaccine is a logistical dream compared to other two authorized in the U S. It's much easier to store and requires only one shot instead of two required by its competitors. The only outstanding question was how well it actually worked. On Friday, they got their answer. It works pretty well. And so, I also I've been hearing from other sources, guys, that yes, the vaccine does work. It is sixty six percent effective. So.、Um, You know, hopefully, you know this was you know a few days ago. Maybe they,、uh, maybe it's more effective now. But let's see what、uh, Verge is saying on this、uh, topic here, because you know as it pertains to everybody,、um, uh, this is definitely you know definitely good information to know, right? So in a forty four thousand person trial that spanned the globe, the vaccine was sixty six percent effective. At preventing moderate to severe COVID-19, now 66% might seem like a letdown compared to the 90 plus person、uh, 90% efficiency from Pfizer, Biotech, and Medoma. But that a matter of perspective, 
before results of those vaccine trials came out, researchers were hoping for uh, effects, right? So efficacies of between 60 and 70 percent, right? So they hit 66 percent, so which is pretty good. So by comparison, seasonal flu vaccines are given to thumbs up uh, when they when they're um, so seasonal flu vaccines are given the thumbs up when they're about 40 to 60 percent effective right so now we're at more than 60 percent effective then it you know works pretty well so all that's to say the new vaccine candidate uh, is still very good at what it does the many people have pointed out that's because 66 percent effectiveness is better than zero which is where a lot of us are operating right now not only that, but the vaccine was 85% effective at preventing the most severe forms of the disease. That's pretty fantastic. Here's, not, here's the not so fantastic thing. The reason that the vaccine was only 66% effective in the trial is that it did not do so well in South Africa, where a worrying new variant is circulating widely. While the efficacy in the US was 72%, the efficacy in South Africa was 57% right that's not that's still not super bad but it does mean that there's a clock uh, ticking in the background as the company moves to the vaccine candidate authorized right the variants are spreading quickly one was first dedicated in the u.s this week right i mean detected in the u.s this week the sooner the world can be vaccinated the better the chance all the vaccines will be at stopping the spread of the virus we've got to do We've got to get the first dose to as many people as possible, virologist Akiko Wasaki told uh, STAT. These variants that are more transmissible and potentially even more lethal are on the rise. I think time is really uh, what we're fighting against. And, you know, that's, that's true, right? So that's pretty much true. But all in all, guys, we have a 66% effectiveness in the U.S. So if you're outside of South Africa, um, that's really good. Even if you're inside South Africa now watching this, uh, just be careful. Um, you know, and you still have 57% effectiveness, which is still um, not super bad as well, right? So that's just a little bit on health, guys. Um, you know, moving forward. Um, also on health too. So it looks like if you guys that know Coachella, um, Coachella has been canceled for the third time due to coronavirus pandemic, right? So health officials have ordered the Coachella Music Festival scheduled for April to be canceled due to the con coronavirus pandemic. It's the third time the pandemic has forced the annual outdoor festival that draws hundreds of thousands of fans in uh, to the California desert to be postponed or canceled. So that's crazy, guys. For you guys that like to party, you know, I know a lot of my friends, they love to go to Coachella. Um, even when I was in high school and college, they'd always, every year, it's like springtime. Hey, guys, where are we going? We're going to Coachella. Like, you coming? We're coming. Like, everybody's going. Everybody's going crazy. But it looks like it's canceled for the third time due to the coronavirus pandemic. So just um just keep that in mind guys if you're trying to if you're a college student you know you're you're looking for plans for spring break and all that stuff you may want to change your plans because coachella has been canceled right and you know if there's any more updates we can let you know too but for right now um, a lot of sources are saying that yes it is canceled so moreover uh we got fortnite fans for you guys that play fortnite uh, G.I. Joe's Fortnite collaboration includes a Snake Eyes skin and action figure. So with all its recent uh, licensed characters, which includes everyone from Sarah Connor to Melodorian, the virtual battlefield of Fortnite is starting to resemble a playground full of action figures. When you think about it like that, a collaboration with G.I. Joe makes a lot of sense. With that in mind, Epic and Hasbro announced that iconic character Snake Eyes will be available as part of the Fortnite universe starting today, but in-game, both in-game and physical toy, right? 
So let's see what um, what snake eyes would actually look like. I mean, you have the GI Joe, you, you got the snake eye skin. This is actually looking uh, pretty cool, you know, for people that are actually, you know, fans of, you know, both genres. So the new version of the character is called Snake Eyes Zero Point Edition, an allusion to a key part of Fortnite lore. The in-game version will be available starting January 30th for 1800 V-Bucks, while a six-inch tall action figure also becomes available to pre-order for $39.99 uh, via Hasbro Plus. Hasbro says that the figure will feature accessories inspired by the rich history of Snake Eyes character, as well as the few that will be familiar to Fortnite fans, like the classic Bougie Bomb. Very interesting name right there. There have already been plenty of toys and figures based on Fortnite's original characters, of course, but this collaboration hints at something different, as licensing deals become bigger part of the Battle Royale. Right, so it looks like this is what the action figure would look like, and you know, it seems pretty, you know, consistent with the GI Joe um, that I used to know back in the day. Very interesting, guys. Very, very cool. Um, moreover, we got a little bit more about you know uh, apps and software. Facebook-owned messaging app WhatsApp has started posting status uh, messages to users about its commitment to your privacy. The in-app messages were appearing for members for the, of the Verge staff in the U.S. and U.K. on Saturday, and some users reported the status messages WhatsApp version of Snapchat Stories or Twitter fleets have been appearing in India for a while now, right? So that's kind of ridiculous, right? They're trying to reassure users about privacy, right? So like that's how, that, that, that all sounds good, Snapchat, but what does that, I mean, not Snapchat, WhatsApp, but what does that really mean? You know, what does that really mean? There's been a lot of misinformation and confusion about our recent update, uh, you know, says WhatsApp, right? Uh, this is a statement coming from WhatsApp, and we want to help everyone understand the facts behind WhatsApp uh, protects people's privacy and security. A WhatsApp spokesperson said in an email to The Verge, going forward, we're going to provide updates to people in the status tab so people hear about hear from WhatsApp directly. Right. Our first update reaffirms that WhatsApp cannot see your personal message and neither can Facebook because they are protected by end to end encryption, as it should be. The messages uh, read one thing that isn't new in our commitment to your privacy and a reminder that WhatsApp can't read or listen to your personal conversations at, as they are end to end encrypted as well. Right. So it's letting people know, um, you know, and, you know, honestly, this is this is good. This is good because, you know, there's been a lot of privacy issues, especially with Facebook, uh, with other applications as well. So, you know, privacy is very important. And, you know, we don't want any of our data leaked, any of our information leaked, any of our personal information leaked as well, especially for having a personal conversation with somebody in WhatsApp or business as well. All right. So the messages are part of a larger effort from WhatsApp to dispel misperceptions about an upcoming update to its privacy policy. The update is meant to explain how businesses use WhatsApp for customer service, may store logs of their chats on Facebook servers. WhatsApp previewed the, chain, uh, previewed the changes to business chats in November. Given Facebook's history of privacy blunders, however, users re uh, misinterpreted the changes to privacy policy to mean WhatsApp would require sharing sensitive profile information with Facebook. The company posted an FAQ page about the changes and pushed back the date. The, date, the update will take effect from February to May. It issued a statement earlier this month addressing the confusion to reiterate that, to reiterate what the new privacy policy would cover. 
right? So this is what they have to say, right? The update does not change WhatsApp date, WhatsApp's data sharing practices with Facebook and does not impact how people communicate privately with friends or family wherever they are in the world. WhatsApp remains deeply committed to protecting people's privacy. We are committed, we are communicating directly with the users through WhatsApp about these changes so they have time to review the new policy over the course of the month. Amid the ensuring uh, confusion rev, uh, rival messaging app Signal and Telegram have both recently seen a surge in new users. Telegram said last week its added ability for users to import their chat history from WhatsApp and Signal has added new mainstream chat features like animated stickers and wall uh, papers to its app as well. So that's always that's always good news, guys, for you guys that probably have been worried that, you know, somebody, you know, your information may have been leaked by WhatsApp or, you know, there's not enough privacy. Um, you know, there's actually, you know, uh, WhatsApp's actually coming forward and saying that that's not the case. There is privacy. Your information's not being leaked. They have the they have the right to share their information with Facebook because, Facebook does own WhatsApp, so they are quote unquote, you know, hand in hand together. Um, but they're not leaking any other, you know, any information to any other sources or apps or other companies as well, too, which is good. So they're all, you know, definitely uh, because, of course, they they talk about their end to end encryption, right? But they're all under, you know, one umbrella, Facebook and WhatsApp. So they like to keep, um, things tight which is good which is always always good to hear <sighs> right so moreover google union in turmoil following global alliance announcement right so the news uh was an unwelcome surprise to union members who expect the alphabet workers union right to run democratically now, multiple sources tell The Verge that some AWU organizers are considering pushing the group to disaffiliate from the Communications Workers of America, a national union representing workers in telecommunications and media. AWU has also set up a committee to investigate CWA's role in the announcement. Right. Wow. So they're, they're looking to disaffiliate themselves from communications workers of america that's also a big uh union workers uh committee right so they're looking to disassociate themselves with them so that cannot be good that is not something that you know any partnership that you know they don't nobody no partnership wants to break right we want to come together so the fact that this is breaking cannot be good news right so the news, right, so the, uh, you know, in a statement of AWA, um, Executive Council Member Ani Assan said, we want to honor the concerns that have been raised, but our primary focus as a union isn't affiliation or disaffiliation. The upheaval points to the difficulties facing AWU. As a so-called minority union, it isn't recognized by the National Labor Relations Board and can't require Alphabet or its subsidiaries like Google to negotiate a contract for its members, right? So we got to remember Alphabet owns Google. Alphabet is above Google, right? Google is under Alphabet, okay? And you may, some of you guys may know that from the stock market or you guys know, uh, just, you know, you guys are faceted. Uh, uh, you guys have, you know, lots of business uh, acumen, right? So, um, you know, its power comes in part from uniting alphabet workers and swelling its membership base to mount public pressure campaigns. Since the union went off or went public on January 4th, it's grown to about from 30, from 230 members, from 230 members to more than 800. But some members have raised concerns that the Communications Workers of America pushed the union to, uh, to go public prematurely. They also say that the CWA has a history of pushing big announcements without first consulting Google workers. 
Amar Gaber, a Google engineer who helped organize the 2018 walkout, told the New York Times that the union has been more concerned with claiming turf uh, than listening to the needs of its organizers. The Alphabet's union rapid expansion, uh, expansion has also underlined the need for clear rules and processes, including when the group puts out statements and who controls major announcements. So far, AWU has called on YouTube to permanently ban Donald Trump and expressed concern about the treatment of Margaret Mitchell, co-lead of the Ethical AI team. Both statements involved significant input from union members. That didn't happen with the Global Alliance announcement announcement right so uni global union a switzerland based federation of labor unions organized the coalition and worked with at least one cwa representative on a rollout strategy the idea was to bring together unions representing google workers across the globe and allow members to share information more easily uni sent out a uh, press release stating that alphabet workers were announcing a new global union alliance to build a more ethical and accountable company. The press release included a quote from Cal talking about the importance of global solidarity, right? The CWA representative Wes McKinney told The Verge and the alliance was worker led in a phone call about the announcement, right? So pretty much, guys, um, you know, it looks like the, um, the Google's uh, union workers, right? So the AWU wants to disassociate themselves with the CWA for leaking information too quickly, right? And again, this is not the first time they're doing this. And it looks like this is a lot of uh, company politics within Google. Um, so if you guys want to learn more about that information, uh, go ahead and follow us our Facebook page. We'll leave a link in the description. You can click on this article and read more as well. <clears throat> Moreover, on this interesting concept, portable PlayStation 2 plays games at full speed, guys. Now, many of you guys are wondering, is this real? Is this concept real? Is this not? Is there a portable PlayStation 2? Now, let's find out. It take, it's taken nearly six years, but a portable PS2 now exists that plays 99% of all game released for Sony's console. So this looks real. The PlayStation 2 remains the best-selling co games consoles of all times, but also now but also now a relic compared to the consoles we game today that hasn't stopped one modder creating a portable version of sony's most successful home console though and in gadget reports reddit user Dar uh, darkwing mode posted details in a video about his about a his finished portable p has two which he called the pit the pis2 Okay, it's taken nearly six years to finish, but that's mainly because Darkwing Mod stopped working on it for four years. It was finished because he couldn't stand seeing this half finished uh, case staring back at him, right? So, this handheld, the handheld in this video uh, uses actual PS2 hardware but supplements it with Raspberry. PI2, which is used to load games over Ethernet from SMB server. By doing so, the handheld requires no emulation and can run 99% of its games and FME at full speed. That is amazing, guys. Let's take a look at this video to see what exactly it looks like in real time.
Wow, that's really cool. Look at that. Looks exactly like the PS2, the, the, the screen and everything. Okay, so it has games already installed in there. I saw Kingdom Hearts in there too. Interesting. cool this is guys this is like you know this is kind of like the PSP but a little bit just a little clunkier but seems just a lot more authentic and original especially to the PS2 it seems a lot more a little bit more old school but still kind of that hip feeling to it it's not like super super old but obviously the PS2 was from uh, actually a little bit more than a decade ago but still, it's still keeping up with the graphics fairly well. The screen could be a little bit bigger, um, but it looks like the controls and everything, you know, it looks really good. That's amazing. That's awesome, guys. We're not going to watch the full uh, the full review of the video. Uh, if you want to watch the full review of the video, guys, you can go ahead. Uh, go ahead in our Facebook page. Go ahead and follow us our Facebook page, and uh, leave a, we'll leave a link in the description. And you can go ahead and, and look at this article on our Facebook page, and then click into the article, and you'll see the videos as well. All right, so. That seems that seems like a really cool concept, guys. Let us know what you think about this concept. If there should be a bigger screen, if they should really, uh, if Sony should really take on this uh, console itself, or maybe another developer could take on a, a, con a console like this and make an even better version, right, where PS2 games can run fully on. So let us know in the comments uh, section below. Let us know what you think. But this concept seems really cool. All right. And we also have EAD Entertainment uh, on our Facebook page as well, right? So we also have Sonic the Hedgehog movie sequel begin shooting in March. All right, so Tika Shumter set to return. So it looks like Sonic the Hedgehog is looking to premiere in March. So for you Sonic fans, that's going to be huge. Let's see, you know, more information about that. You know, maybe who would be starring in it? Uh, what time in March? Is there a specific date? Um, let's see if they answer all of these questions here. So actrix, uh, actress Tika Sumter has confirmed that the Sonic the Hedgehog movie sequel will begin filming in March, and she also revealed where the filming will take place. In an interview with Live with Kelly and Ryan, Sumter confirmed that her character is coming back and the production will begin in March. Filming will take place both in Vancouver and Hawaii, she said. The March start date is no surprise at, as it was previously reported that a movie co-named Emerald Hill will begin filming in Canada in March and wrap up in May. Sumter played the character Maddie in 2020 Sonic the Hedgehog. She also remarked in the uh, interview that her daughter is a fan of the movie and she said she wanted to meet Sonic someday which Sumter said will be a problem because Sonic is not real, unless she plays in the video game. But at least they could play around with it, at least have an actual Sonic real, you know, character on set, you know. No firm, deta no firm details about the plot have been announced yet, but the but a post credit scene in the original review revealed that Tails has gone looking for Sonic. Presumably, he'll feature in the sequel. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is scheduled to release April 8, 2022. 
All right, so next year, April 8th, 2022, not too bad. Assuming that it's able to shoot without incident. The first movie initially looked like a disaster, thanks to Sonic's weird design, but it ended up being decent enough to earn an 8 out of 10 in GameSpot's review, which is pretty good. Sonic made $148.9 million in the U.S. to become the, the highest grossing game adaption in uh, ever in the country, overtaking Detective Pikachu. Globally, however, Sonic made $319.7 million, which lags behind Detective Pikachu $433 million, and Warcraft $439 million right so very interesting very interesting uh so we should see uh the movie roll out april 8th 2022 very interesting news guys <clears throat> all right